Welcome back to Sledgehammer Horror, guys. I am Ken Sledge. And I'm Ashley Sledge. And let's talk horror. So today we are once again joined by one of the amazing cast members from the upcoming Winnie the Pooh, Blood and Honey 2. Mm -hmm. We are here with the amazing Louis Santer. Louis, how are you doing today? Very good, thank you. How are you? We are, you are a lot better now that you're here. Yeah. It's been a crazy day. <laughs> Happy to be hanging out with you now. But yeah. Louis, before we talk about why you're here, we would like for the people that don't know you to get to know you a little bit. Um, mm -hmm. You are from the South Coast of England, uh, a young British yeah, actor who recently graduated from drama school. Um, so, you know, when you're studying acting, you're studying stage combat, when you're doing those type of things, do you think it makes it easier for you to try to perform your own stunts throughout a film? Definitely, yeah, definitely. I sort of, um, I always did acting since I was like 11 years old. And then um, sort of I did a year at drama school, did this year of just acting at the same drama school. And it was like a foundation year, so you sort of try out different things. And in that time, I tried out stage combat for a term. And I was one of those actors. I was just purely an actor. Like, I wasn't a singer. I wasn't a dancer. I'm nothing like that. I'm just an actor. Okay. So I tried out a bit of stage combat. And I thought, it's good as an actor to have a niche and to have another string to your bow. And you did all these other actors. And a lot of them could sing and they could dance and they had comedy. Like, they would stand up comedy. And I thought, I'm just an actor. So I thought, what could I do? So I was very new to combat. Uh, and then started it in 2020 and then did it for three years. And you just, you start to appreciate it a lot of like how much work goes into just a single fight scene in the film um, and how it's like another string to your bow. The fact you can do stunts or you can also fight and be that kind of actor that doesn't need someone to come in and help. So it's kind of, yeah, it's another string to your bow. Yeah, absolutely. Well, and you talk about how you're not a dancer, but I mean, if we could be really technical when you're doing these type of stunts, it really is a ballet on its own. Yes, you know? yeah, yeah, definitely, yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's a, it's just definitely a type. Of, the choreo is definitely a type of dance, um, and it is really. If you sort of slow, like we'd start with like, so obviously, for example, you get like a knife fight. You'd start with this slow motion sort of thing of like, then I'm going to touch this, I'm going to come here, and it looks quite pretty actually when you're doing it slowly. And then once obviously it's at performance speed, then you can add the aggression, and because you trust each other so much at this point, you can now make mm -hmm. it look like you're going for each other's throat, but you're not. You just kind of right in each other's tune <laughs> and i've always said this stunt work like that is more of a dance than it is a fight because like you said you trust your partner you know you have a partner that's going to know your moves just like you know their moves and you guys are moving together in a synchronized thing which is a ballet yeah. of its own and it's a beautiful like we love the reason we do this is our love of film yeah you know we love watching yeah. behind the scenes we love watching you guys you know stunt work visual stuff behind yeah. the scenes and it's incredible to mm -hmm. see the hard work you guys put into your craft yeah, I think before I did combat, you sort of, you watch these fight scenes and you go, oh, that's cool. And then you kind of forget about it. And then every time yeah. they combat, I'm like, so much goes into just like a 20 second sequence. The amount mm -hmm. of work that goes into these things, but they're so quick. And especially on camera, on stage, you can sort of capture it a bit more. But on camera, it's so quick. And with editing and stuff like that, it's like you just lose things. And it's like, mm -hmm. you don't realize how much work goes into these little sequences. So I've yeah. got right. a new found appreciation for it, really. Right. And that's what we hope to do when we're doing these interviews is bring this to people that don't study the film like that. Yeah. There's nothing wrong with that. There's people that love yeah. to watch horror movies or watch movies, action, drama, just to watch and be entertained. Mm -hmm. But the yeah, amount of yeah. work that goes on behind the scenes with everyone, everything mm -hmm. one from a key grip to a PA, it doesn't matter. Everyone has to know their part. And I mean, yeah, you've had some very lucky moments in your career already with your opportunities from being, you know, performing at Shakespeare's Globe twice and now a few yeah. feature films as well. You said you can't dance, really. You know, a little bit of kind of bad, but hopefully you can bounce. Because, <laughs> yes. my friend, you are Tigger in the upcoming Winnie the yes. Pooh Blood yeah. Honey too. So, yeah. um, you know, I, I wish that would have been on the resume. Like, can you sing? Can you dance? Can you bounce? Can you bounce? You know, yeah, so I, can bounce. <laughs> I can definitely do that. Yeah, I can bounce. <laughs> so the big thing for us is um, this is a, a film. The first one was very, very... Uh, different with the crowd some yeah. people loved it some people hated it uh we got a lot of anticipation coming into the second one yeah, yeah. so how did you get involved with this project it's quite a funny story actually so i literally graduated from drama school last july and then straight out of the gate of drama school i got offered this job at the globe so i knew a director who was who was directing the show so he offered me the role and uh whilst i was at the globe i remember i think it was like the, maybe i think two weeks into rehearsals um my agent sent forward the role of Tigger and I remember reading it and it was like this character breakdown it gets sent to you uh, for your agent and it said like heavy prosthetics, um, very physical role, like animal studies required like to play an animal. Uh, inspirations were Freddy Krueger, 
Pennywise, Art the Clown, and these are all like heroes to me. Like I'm obsessed with Pennywise. I've got a Pennywise tattoo. I love Pennywise. I oh, love Fred. Uh, I love Art the Clown. I love all these characters. And at the same time, I've always said I'd love to do prosthetic work. If someone knew me before this role, they know I've always said that. Um, so I was like, this is like my dream role. I was like, this is like, if someone could make a dream role and send it to me, this is it. So I said to my agent, I was like, please send me forward. So she did. And uh, I couldn't wait. So I remember that day I went on Instagram and I followed everyone involved in the first film. Okay. So I followed Reese and Scott and Vince, the DOP, and even the cast, like the whole cast from the first film just to sort of get on their radar a little bit. And then I think kind of, I think, oh, that was it. Reese followed me back that night as well, which is great. So he followed me back. That's a good sign. And then I think it was the day before our show at the Globe, Reese texted me out of the blue on Instagram. And he said, hi, Lewis. So I saw you got put forward for Tigger. Uh, we're starting to get tapes in, because obviously since COVID, it's all fine now. We're getting tapes in. Uh, and do you want to do one? Like, you've got the weekend to do it, and like, we'd love to have it in by, like, Monday. So I was like, oh my God, this is a good sign. So he's like, so he's texted me already. So I remember I had like two days to get this self tape together. So I finished my mm -hmm. show at the Globe, got home back to the south coast of England and um, literally did this self tape. I was up to about four in the morning doing this, this crazy, <laughs> crazy self tape. I had to like kill someone and I was like drooling and I had blood around my mouth. And it was, it was crazy. They never saw what I was doing. If they, so we've got like windows in my, where my kitchen is, I was doing it there. If, if neighbors saw that at four in the morning, they would so called the police. I was like hiding where the body would have been and I was like pretending to like do all these horrible things to it um and then sent it in and they went oh can I see some combat clips so I sent some combat pictures so your body moves that kind of thing and that was it for about two weeks and I remember it was killing me I was like refreshing my emails my messages oh I bet and it was like I remember we had like graduation as well and I didn't care about it because I was just thinking about this role um and then he came back to me about two weeks later and texted me saying we want to offer you the role Tigger out of the blue and I nice. just crazy and then that was it the minute I got the role it was like now you need to get your sex fitted now you need to do this do this do this and then a month later we we're on set so it was just mm -hmm. whirlwind and oh, oh, yeah really that's awesome it's amazing to hear like these dreams come true you know because uh, you know, us as well you know we're horror fans you yeah. know and you get offered these type of roles and you still get those butterflies in your stomach mm -hmm. you know yeah like, gotcha. yeah and it's not like I, obviously this is an indie film done by indie artists but with the amount of money the last one made, you know that, you know, there's an anticipation on this, this film, you know, yeah. and um, when, when you're getting into a character, usually it's, it's pretty easy to go too deep into a character, become method. Now with Tigger, like you said, yeah. this is a dark character. This isn't our bouncy, fun Tigger. Yeah. We were joking about it earlier, but you know, this is a very dark character in yeah. this film. So what did you do to help you get into character? What helped you become, go from Lewis to being yeah. Tigger? So I kind of thought about this and I thought, I've not actually been asked this question yet about like method acting and I kind of borderline did method act in a way for this character. So what I wanted to do, so I had like a month. So like I said, I got the role and a month later we were on set. So in that month, I thought, what's the best thing I can do with my time? So I thought if I watch every horror film I can and just study them. So I watched like Terrify 1 like three or four times. I watched Terrify 2 like four times. Like all these just kept watching over and over again. I was making I had like a whole book full of notes and I was making notes mm -hmm. of like what scares me. I think as a performer, like what what do I find scary from these characters and what can I put into Tigger to make this like perfect sort of role that I would find scary. Um so I was like like Pennywise, Aunt the Clown, that sort of thing. I was seeing what they had in common. And then I was also doing stuff like trying out the movement, but I really want to find the movement of the character. So like I said, I was, once again I was in my kitchen to like four in the morning and mm -hmm. I'd be crawling around. And I'd like be fil I was filming stuff and I was like making notes of it and thinking, oh, that works, that works. And then I was even in the gym, like I trained quite hard in the gym for a month, just trying to pack on a bit more muscle. And even in the gym, like in the stretch area, I was like crawling around mm -hmm. and I was like sort of making notes of stuff that works. If anyone saw me, they'd think I'm like, what not that. But it's <laughs> getting into that that mindset of Tigger. And it was like just I think staying up late anyway and watching horror films like back to back does something to your brain anyway just to sort of get into that character and also made a Tigger playlist as well really helped the use of music really helped to get the character uh -huh. um I made the most god awful playlist you've ever heard I still have on Spotify now uh, <laughs> and it's just screamo and then there's like just like there's some songs apparently there's just people screaming on the mic and breathing and panting down this mic and I just had that playing in my ears whilst at the gym it sounds crazy but it helps you get into that role yeah <laughs> stuff like for example the makeup process was quite a, like a couple hours it was quite a long time so you'd be sat in that chair and even that I was using that to like mentally prep what have I done over the past month what can I like what's worked 
And, and even when like I would get on set and I'd be very, I'm quite a jokey person. Like, I like having a laugh. And I'd be like that before the makeup. Once I get the makeup on, I remember I was quite like kept to myself between takes. I would do a take and then everyone would be like laughing a bit, like changing, you know, the camera angle. And I kind of took myself away from the group a little bit. And I remember people asking me, like the crew were going, you okay, Lewis? Like, you're good. I'm like, yeah, like, mate, I'm absolutely like, I'm loving this. I'm loving every second. Yeah. But I'm just sort of trying to stay in that mental state because, you know, it's a big character and people love the first film and you're doing a, a job for people to, you know what I mean? For people to sort of judge and watch. So you, you, you end up taking it quite seriously. Yeah. So, yeah. See, and, and you're talking about, you know, the love of the first film and now this budget has been more than tripled. Yeah. So you guys, yeah. you know, the, the look, even just from the trailers, you know, the look of everything is different mm -hmm. and it yeah. looks like we're going to get, you know, and I've talked to a couple other people talked about how they listened to what the fans were saying. And that's another thing that we were really, really happy about is the fact that they are taking fans words, yeah. calming down a little bit on social media. You know, that's the thing yeah. that was, you know, you know, those are really, really important things moving forward with this franchise and the mm -hmm. things they want to do after this. Definitely, so yeah. Tigger, he's a new character to, you know, Blood and Honey 2. What, can you give us some like non-spoiler, like what does Tigger bring to the new movie? The Tigger is, so I keep saying this, he's like the misfit of the group, I think. He's kind of the one where the three others, so Piglet, Owlin and Pooh, they sort of, they, um, I dare I say civilized because they're all crazy, but they've mm -hmm. got more sort of emotion behind their acts. So they're sort of acting from all the place of pain and revenge. Mm -hmm. And but like with Tigger, he is like the just the ultimate sort of bloodthirsty killer uh, of them all. So he's like the one that's just he just kills for the sake of killing. He loves doing, and there's no okay. sort of reason behind it. Like they've got a reason for what what why okay. they do what they do. But Tigger sort of he's kind of kept down. And he's sort of caged away from the group, and until obviously not to spoil too much, but until he is out, it's like okay, oh god, Tigger's out now, and he's kind of that one that even like I feel like the group even looked down on him a little bit because he's just too much for them. Um, mm -hmm. And he is just like he's been described as the most vicious one of them all, and it is true. Like I feel like the others will sort of kill just to just to kill, like they need to rip through people when they're doing it because they're so you know there's a lot of pain there and a lot of anger. I think Tigger he takes his time with the killing, like he actually loves mm -hmm. tormenting victims, blame them a little bit, like a big cat would. And yeah. kind of his thing, like he really wants to savor like every moment whilst he's killing, and that's what just makes him different from the other three. I feel like he's just he's the real crazy one, of the, like the truly crazy one. I feel like you're talking about how visceral he is. Like yeah. to me, when you're talking about him, all I'm hearing is Hannibal Lecter. Yeah, you know, like yeah. that's the the way that you're describing him is just the brutality mm -hmm. and the yeah. the visceral. Like that yeah. to me, like even the other killers are like, "Whoa, this guy's <laughs> crazy." You know that's what I mean? Like, idea. yeah, like, they're crazy as well. Don't get me wrong, they're crazy, but even yes. like he's too crazy for them. And he's also described as like when I asked the producer, like, "What's his character like?" Like back in August, he went picture like he's on 50 red bulls at once like he's always on 50 red bulls and he's yeah. ready to kill so that's another thing as well he's never like got a day off like he's always high energy he's like my hands were like shaking at all times i'm like twitching and snarling yeah. he's got so much like adrenaline running through him all the time and he just can't wait to find his next victim mm -hmm. and that's Tigger. he's just ready to that's, go 24 7 that's uh, they really did like take you know the character of tigger and just yeah. make him vicious yeah yeah that's, yeah. Awesome. that's exactly that's that. how tigger was yeah tigger's got, I mean, tigger's got was, a bounce he was always bouncing and even the other characters were always kind of like annoyed with yeah, him like, you tigger, know gosh, yeah like darn, calm down down yeah. <laughs> yeah he's too much for them in the cartoon and now he's too much for them in, in the film I like that. Right. Yeah. yeah. Well, and if you guys haven't already seen our interview with Nikki, uh, we did play the trailer there. But now we are once again going to take a couple seconds here and we're going to play you the trailer for the upcoming Winnie the Pooh 2 Blood and Honey. Let's begin. I'm going to take you back there. Feel all weight drift away. How are you feeling? Good, I think. Do you recall anything from the session? Focus. What is happening? This was the day Billy was taken. No! And kids. They didn't stay buried. If the earth itself was allowing this horror to rise up. Ah! 
there's some unsettling similarities to the Hundred Acre Massacre. It's not safe. There have been loads of murders being dashed down. Tell me everything you saw, please. I knew that this day would come. talk about brutality mm-hmm. there's nothing better than a rave brutality so um you know we're very excited just from checking out the trailer it looks like we're gonna get a whole bigger a lot bigger film now. yeah yeah i'm excited <laughs> about it Louis, can you tell us a little bit about your experience on set the experience on the set so my experience on set was just it was just a dream really like i wasn't on set for that long i was only on set for a few nights um and obviously that makes sense why when you watch the film but yeah. yeah, so I wasn't on set for that long, so it, kind of, it went by so quick, and I feel like I didn't take it for granted, like I was trying to save it every moment. But it was like, even though it's a horror film, and it's such a brutal, brutal film, everyone on set was just so lovely, and I was really looked after, which was nice, because the character was a very physical character, and there's a lot of scenes that really take it out of you as well, when you're in prosthetics, you are sweating, and it's heavy, and there's some bits where I just go crazy for like minutes, and then after the obviously cool cut, I was always had like a water person, or a coffee person, or a chair, but so I was really looked after on set, um, and it's quite funny because you sort of you come desensitized to it a little bit. Um, mm-hmm. You sort of have all these different deaths and kills, and you start like they're crazy. And the first couple, you're like, "Oh, this is cool." And then after you've done like three or four, or five kills, you're like, "It's a process now. We're moving on." Um, right. But there was one. If I'm going to say a story on set, there was one kill. I keep mentioning mm-hmm. this one because it's such a good kill. But there's this person. I'm, there's this victim above me. I won't say what I'm doing, so I'm going to spoil it. I'm doing something horrid to someone, and basically, Tigger is literally in a shower of blood whilst he's killing this person. It's like literally a shower. Like, uh, I was completely red, like I was covered in blood. And it's in my eyes, it was in my mouth. Um, And that was one moment on set where I did walk away from killing someone and it was like, everyone kind of stopped for a second. Before then it was like, yeah, brilliant, next next kill. And that was actually a moment where everyone kind of looked and was like, okay, that was that was disturbing. So that's one moment that's really stuck with me, that death. Um, that was a really nice moment. But yeah, it was a great, great experience. Uh, I just can't wait for people to see it. And obviously, tickets are on sale now, by the way. They're on sale. Um, Fathom Events. If you go to Fathom Events, you can book your tickets for 26th, 27th, and 28th of March. And hopefully, it's at Cinema near you. See, and we do have our links down in the description for our American viewers. So you can pre order here as well. Um, and now, one thing I do want to say is it may have been for you a blessing in disguise to only be on set for a couple of days, I would think, just because of the makeup process. Yeah. Um, yeah. Now I know that if, if they needed you longer, I know you would have done it. But obviously, yeah, those are a process. You know, um, I'm not going to go too much into it. I was lucky to have my face completely ripped off in a horror film as well. So I know oh, about what? the prosthetics and doing stuff like that as well. So, um, yeah. it, I, I much respect for you for having to sit down. I was lucky. I got to listen to American baseball. I was listening to the Detroit Tigers play while they were doing <laughs> yeah, the makeup yeah. on me, trying hard not to cheer whenever something would happen. Oh, yeah, but, don't say it comes off the air. Yeah. Right. Right. It's, it's, it's a nice sort of process it is because it's like like i said it, it helped me get into the the mental yeah. state of tigger to give him a bit of time mm-hmm. that's awesome and you know one last question for you because we want to get this from each individual themselves if you could tell someone what to expect of the upcoming blood and honey 2 what would you yeah. say their expectations should be oh that's a good question that's a good question uh i'll say the expectation is it how to sort of describe the film doing how to describe it would you say that kind of thing it is just, this film is complete carnage and chaos. If you do like the first one, it's just that on steroids. It, li- it really is on a much bigger scale. And like me, for example, I'm a massive horror fan and I love horror films, but it's just complete carnage. Where it's like the, the kill count is just extremely high and it's just nonstop carnage from the start until the end. And that is this film. Like the first one was great, but it sort of focuses on like singular kills. So sort of that's person. Mm-hmm. I mean, they pick it up one by one. But this is like, there are moments of that this is more just complete, just a bloodbath the whole way throughout. And as a horror fan, I think it's great, like that kind of um, that kind of film. So I just, I, all I'll say is the fans should be very excited because it would be absolutely crazy. 
Awesome. And we can't wait either. Like you yeah. said, guys, always support indie horror. Absolutely. Um, so, Louis, we've had an amazing time hanging out with you and talking yeah. to you, but we are at the end of the third act. The credits are about to roll and the curtain's about to drop. But before that yeah. happens, not only do we have all the links to so you can order your tickets now in the description, we yeah. have Louis's social media links. So make sure you're yeah. following him on social media so you can stay up to date. Like I said, Tigger now, you never know tomorrow. Yeah. He's going to have plenty more of these roles coming up in the future. So you can yeah. stay up to date on everything he's doing. Make sure you're following him on social media as well. Um, Lewis, please don't go anywhere, my friend. we got a couple more questions for you. Um, yeah. Everyone else, if you haven't already, please like and subscribe. It really helps to build our channel more than you know. And follow Sledgehammer Horror on social media. Our links are down in the description as well. But until next time, keep talking horror. Stay who you are. And we'll see you guys soon. Bye, guys.